each and every one of you for being here. This is quite a distinguished group this afternoon. Uh, we have representatives from the federal government, from business and industry, from our employers, our students, our faculty, <coughs> local community, the chamber, county commission. So I want to thank all of you for taking the time to, to be here this afternoon. Uh, I think Jim said the key word today, magic. Because that's what it really feels like. We are here to celebrate the opening of this Center of Excellence in Manufacturing Engineering. It started out as an idea. We weren't even sure what it would look like, but we said we know ARC power grants are available, and we'd like to do something not only for our students, but we want to do something that will benefit our community and our entire region and have something that can really invest in our region, help train our students and bring other, others back who may need retraining and, and what's a good idea. So we brought a group of faculty and staff together and they did a lot of brainstorming. And today we celebrate the culmination of that. And it's been a wonderful team effort. I want to thank everybody who has been involved in this venture from the very beginning throughout. And the first person we need to thank is Mr. Scott Hamilton. Scott, could you please stand? Executive Director of the ARC. <laughs> Scott, thank you. Without you, we wouldn't even be here. <laughs> and uh, in just a few moments, you'll have the opportunity to see the magnificent cutting edge equipment that his grant has provided equipment that will help train our students uh, not only for today's jobs but for the jobs of the future when we look at the robotics the uh, water jets just some amazing things so i want to thank you scott for being here and would like to thank where is jeff mcfadden and joanne right in front of me and joanne is she as I said, it took a team effort, but I want to thank particularly the two of them because they really took this idea, they ran with it. So, Jeff, Joanne, thank you. And students, we want to thank you for being here. And I heard the tour that you gave earlier today. Uh, you can tell your passion, how much you enjoy learning what you're learning, and I know that you're going to be invaluable assets when you go out into the workplace. You already are great assets, and it'll be even more wonderful when you're um, out there being able to use those skills. So we want to thank, thank you. And uh, let's see, others I'd like to thank by name is see Dave Rideout, City Manager, Bill Archer, County Commission, Debbie representing the Chamber. We have representatives from PEMCO, Appalachian Power, Volvo. Anybody else I'm missing? Because you all are integral. Okay. All right, so thank all of you for being here. We want you to enjoy this celebration. Bluefield State is here. We're here for you. And um, we're here because of you. So thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Crossing. Uh, my name is Shannon Bowling. I'm the Dean of Engineering Technology and Computer Science. And I just want to say that it's really easy to preach something if you believe it. And what we have is I truly believe in. Um, I'm a graduate of Louisville State College, and I went through the program, and uh, went through, finished my degrees, ultimately came back. And a few years ago, uh, when I got the Dean's position, we had a few faculty that were starting to retire. And one of the positions that we had to advertise for was the mechanical engineering technology uh, position. So myself and Jeff Bolton, who was the department head for that program, I said, you know, let's shoot for the moon on this position. You know, we know we're not going to get probably exactly what we're looking for, but let's just, just shoot for the moon. So we put together this completely unrealistic announcement that we knew no one would ever be able to meet all the criteria. <laughs> and they, uh, we put it out, and then we had another faculty member that 
that saw it, and he said, you know, I, I know this guy that might be interested. And I said, well, first of all, I said, where's he from? And he said, well, he's from New Jersey. I'm like, New Jersey? For <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I said, I said tell, send the resume. Let me take a look at it. So we got the resume, and we looked at it, and I'm like, wow, this is, uh, this is a whole lot better than the announcement we put together. I said, I just have just one question. You know, why would this person want to come here? I mean, who's their person? Louisville State. And this this area, and he's like, well, I think he wants to do something, something a little different. So obviously, the person I'm talking about is Professor McFadden, and so he applied, got the job, and I just want to say I can't tell you really how proud I am to work with this this, this individual. That he has been an amazing asset to Louisville State College. Uh, you know, probably one of the best hires that we've ever had. You know, Louisville State. Uh, so I would. Uh, that's how I would like to introduce. Uh, the director, the executive mm -hmm. director for our Center of Excellence for Manufacturing and Engineering. Jeff, I'm really proud to work with you. I think you've been a great asset to, uh, to the program and to the students, and I uh, look forward to working with you for many more years. The worst part of that, at least, was true, but I, I very much appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so this thing sort of started, and, and you know, part of my passion, I'm really into this stuff. This, is, this has been a fun time for us. Um, <clears throat> we recognize that many of our mechanical graduates wound up working as manufacturing engineers. So we said, well, you know, there are grants there. Maybe we can leverage this thing and, and, and up our game a little bit in manufacturing. We had, I think, good labs, but, you know, the equipment was pretty well dated. I mean, a lot of it, you know, sort of, sort of gauging it by my age, most of it was older than me. So not terribly pertinent for industry anymore. Um, so we applied for the grant, and really the, the focus of the grant is, is really uh, fourfold. One is that we offer, um, you know, undergraduate uh, degrees in manufacturing engineering. Um, the second is that we offer training opportunities to displaced coal workers, okay, because they have the skill sets, really the, the core skill sets that you need in manufacturing, right? Work with your hands, you know, ability to read prints, you know, a whole host of things. So it was, it was just a good fit. And then finally to, to well, not finally, two more things. Um, that we provide local industry, and local being defined by three hours of us, um, whatever they need. If they want to try out a new piece of equipment, if they want to develop a new technology, that's the kind of thing you really don't want to do in your own manufacturing plant, if you can avoid it. Because if it doesn't work the first time, it's got that reputation. So if you have a place to do that, that's sort of a safe haven, if you will, which the school provides, that, that's the best way to do it. And so we, we started to do that. Um, we've got four or five different things that we're working on right now. We hope to get more, um, and we need more students. So I, I'll put out a recruiting hat. If you know any kids that want to, or just place co-workers, or, or people that just want to get back and get more education, please send them to us because we have we have lots of opportunities. Um, and then the fourth and final piece is to offer um, training to to local companies specific to them. If they want to know about GD&T, or if they want to know about CAD modeling or whatever it might be, we'll put together a curriculum and a program to, to do that for you. So tailored to what, you, to what you're looking for. So that's, that's, how the, the, you know, that's how the grant was written. We received the grant. It was you know, outstanding. Um, you know, it, was, it, was, it was painful in that we had this big pile of money and it took a while to be able to spend it because <coughs> working for a state, which was my first time being involved in a working for a government agency, but, but we, finally got it, we finally got it spent, and, uh, and almost all spent, we still got one. But, but um, it, was, it, was a, it was a great, uh, a great effort, and I'll, I'll, I'm coming back up to introduce some students, so I'll talk more about them in a minute. Um, I'd like to introduce Scott, and, and Scott, I introduced you a couple minutes ago to Forrest, and he said it best, he said, thank you. And that's, that's exactly how we feel. We appreciate, we appreciate the confidence in us, and, and um, as I mentioned, we're leveraging this. We've got donations coming in, but none of it would have happened without getting that grant. So we really appreciate it. And with that, I'll turn it over to you. Kirk. Thank you. How are we doing? Doing all right? Yeah. Excellent. This is a good day, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's a good day. I, I did. I was down there, and, and you talked about Forrest. You know, ever since I've known Forrest, he's always said it right on the mark with his <laughs> comment. <laughs> and how long have you known each other for? Thirty years. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so he gave 
Jerry Turner and Colin also uh, appreciated the, the enthusiasm and the, the vision that they see of what this means to them going down the road and looking out here to all the students that are in it. I, I, I see it in your eyes as well, and the opportunity that's out there. I've uh, been with ARC for um, about four years. And uh, before I was with ARC, I was in uh, West North Carolina and worked on recruitment of business and industry in a little different capacity than what I do at ARC for community uh, investment. But I always talk about, and it still holds true today, is the definition of a job. And a job is hope, opportunity, and prosperity. And when I'm here at this facility watching what that equipment and everybody working on it and learning, and, <coughs> and Colin walked me around and showed me everything, I see the hope in your eyes. And that's what this is about. Y'all have been saying thank you to me. I, I didn't do this. No, um, I, and this was not me doing this. And in fact, my signature could maybe get you a cup of coffee at the Starbucks if I have enough money on my card. <laughs> um, but, but the way this works, this is a competitive grant. This, this was competitive against a bunch, a bunch of applications. And y'all got this back in the, uh, 17 in 2017. And uh, in this last round, let me just talk about how competitive the power is, and, and so you know what you got in, in this award. And the power round for 2018, we did it in two tranches. In our first tranche, we received about 100, almost 200 applications. And uh, that, well, I'm sorry, about 150 applications total, about $200 million. And we were able to award about 31 million out of that request. We just had uh, uh, earlier, a couple months ago, we had another deadline for the rest of the money. We had about 15 to 17 million dollars left to invest in the power program for 2018. We got 108 applications that totaled about 150 million dollars for 17 million dollars that we were able to when y'all went through this process, this was not, oh, we like them, let's do something for them. Oh, we haven't done something for Bluefield State in a long time. Um, our history with Bluefield State goes back to 1968 when we gave one of the first grants ARC gave was in 1968 to Bluefield State to um, work in the same type of workforce and economic development program for workforce training. And so we had a commitment, but it wasn't that well we did it then. Y'all did good. You had a strong application. You put it together. You talked about what you were going to do. I'm going to pick on Jeff just a minute. He talked about it. He's spending the money. Well, we don't look at it as an expense. We look at it as an investment. And what we're looking at is we want to invest into projects that the return on that investment is going to provide that hope, opportunity, and dignity for the communities and for the people that are able to go out and get jobs and be able to provide that, not just for themselves, but for their family. And so that's what this project is about. And we're thrilled about that. ARC is thrilled to be a part of that and being able to be in a position to be able to invest in communities and to be able to help them with this um, innovation and really economic transformation in the community. And that is really tough. Somebody's probably going to look these dates up and then they'll correct me in a minute. But the cathedral in Cologne took, I believe, about 600 years to build. Somebody put the first stone down and knew they would never see the last stone go up. But they knew somebody had to start it. And that's what they did. And that's what y'all are doing. That's what economic transformation is about. It's, you've got to start it to get it down. And that's what all of y'all are doing. And that's what these programs are about. And I will tell you, that's why your project scored so well, is there is a return on the investment. Our organization is a partnership between the federal government and the states. We have 13 states, and West Virginia is the only state that the entire state is in our region. The 13 governors uh, serve on the commission or the board of directors, along with the presidentially appointed and Senate confirmed uh, federal representative. Currently, and just recently, within the last six months, Tim Thomas from Kentucky has taken on that role. He's been around with ARC for a while. Earl Bowl may be familiar to you as our previous federal co-chair. 
and Tim is there and uh, doing a great job. And he sends his regards. Uh, he talked about uh, you, know, you can only be in one place at one time, and uh, he was otherwise occupied today. And so I was off. I got the opportunity to come down here to, to be with y'all. Um, but it's that collaboration between the federal government and the state that have invested in this, and it takes the federal co-chair's signature to invest any of those federal dollars. And uh, I know we look forward to the value of this. I'm sure we look forward to being able to be down here at some point to be able to see the return on the investment. Because we're thrilled about that. So I've got a bunch of other things that I could say. But I really hope I've made my point. Is economic transformation is transformation is a process. And y'all have started that process. We're thrilled to be a part of it by investing into y'all who's invested into your community and to the people that you serve. And we're very fortunate to have some of these folks, I'll tell you, I'm very impressed with them. And uh, I'm pleased about what I've seen here. And all I want to say is thank you all. Keep it up. We look forward to seeing what those returns are with your investment. So thank you. So, so one of the experiences I've had in my life is I've had the opportunity to work with some really, really good teams. Teams of three, four, five, ten people that perform well, work well together, able to really get things accomplished. Well, the team of students that we had working on this ranks very close, if not at the absolute top of that list. Um, and so I, I asked these three guys who are sort of the, the most consistent or most constant in it, and that they worked all summer on the project um, and sort of led, led the to, to a large extent. Um, to just say a few words and give us a student perspective. Um, again, these three, as well as the rest of the folks that worked on this, unbelievable. I cannot thank you guys enough for what you've done. And uh, you know, it, it's been a pleasure working with you. So Colin Dalton, Ronnie White, Forrest Yates. I'm not sure who's gonna talk, I think Ronnie's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now I got a volunteer. I'm gonna, so I've been asked to give the student perspective on this. Um, and I'm gonna brag on it a little bit. This started a year ago, and there's been there's a lot more students than just those three that worked on this. I know Mark, TJ, Reagan, uh, Jonah, uh, some of the sophomores are working on this project now. They've all contributed, and uh, we we've done our best to uh, to get this going. Uh, we, me, us three, me, Colin, and uh, Ron, uh, got the opportunity to work during the summertime. And it was it was awesome. I remember Dr. Bowman came by one day and, and pulled up. He said, he said, this is y'all gonna remember this summer. He said y'all gonna look back and think, you know, you're gonna you wish you were there. And I think that's gonna be true, from a, at least from my from my perspective. Um, so also, um, this is this grant has transformed this school. We went from a machine shop that was you know, 20 years old, I think it might have been a new piece of equipment, not counting the, uh, like a drill or something. And uh, we've got state-of-the-art equipment now, and we really appreciate that. Uh, I've, me and us three have gotten also the opportunity to see this kind of go forward full circle. Uh, we're helping Professor McFadden teach labs to the sophomores, and uh, it's, it's really been enjoyable to see them uh, start using this equipment and learning on it, and it's providing them skills that's going to really benefit you guys from industry, hopefully, one of these days. Um, and you help us get a job and a good salary. Uh, you know, I'm gonna do a little bit of a pitch towards the future, too. They, uh, we, we need students, and I know y'all have nephews and kids and grandkids and what else. We need, we need kids to come into this program and take advantage of this grant that we got. Uh, we, are, um, we like to pick on Virginia Tech because they're our closest engineering school. We're about half the cost of Virginia Tech. Uh, industry hires us just as well as Virginia Tech from what we can tell. Um, and some of the industry here might be able to attest to that. Uh, we, we have the ability to work with uh, the, the, the industry currently also with our new equipment we have. We're able to help them develop their processes that they need to be competitive in their respective markets. And I want to thank Professor McFadden and Joanne and Dr. Bolton and everybody else who's really helped with this going forward. And uh, if y'all got any questions, they said that they would answer questions. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope y'all have some. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I guess that's sort of it, right? Oh, we have a, uh, I think we're going to do a water date presentation or a demonstration after this. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, so, so we're here as late as you want to be here, but we're here certainly till 7. That's the, 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 the schedule. I really encourage you guys to, to come down and see the labs and see the equipment so that when you go home and tell your nephew or, or grandchild or whatever to come to Bluefield State that, uh, you know, you can, you can attest to that. So we've got three labs. There's signs. Um, that Joanne put up that, that guides you to those. There's a metrology lab, there's a robotics lab, and the processes lab. And they're sort of at opposite corners on the second floor. Um, so how, how do we want to... There's look? lots of students that will walk you through. Yeah, so we need some, some leaders. Where's Mark? I know Mark is very yeah. anxious to, <laughs> <laughs> to take a group. So why don't we say, Mark, you guys are going to go to the labs, I guess, right? So you'll be there, and then Mark and Jonah and TJ, you guys want to each take a group? Um, let's look at you, but we're not a student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ash, you want to take a group, Ash? Okay. And uh, you guys can sort of tag along and help out too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and also the robotics. Okay. Good. Yeah. So. Three, in two, in one, and cut. All right. All right. All right.